On behalf of the Stockhausen Foundation for Music, I would like to welcome you all to the streaming of the work Carlican for Clarinet, which was originally supposed to be performed during the memorial concert for Karlheinz Stockhausen on the 5th of December in 2020. This would have been the exact date that he died 13 years ago. Before I talk about the piece Harlequin, I would like to tell you a little bit about the Stockhausen Foundation for Music. My name is Suzanne Stevens Janning, and I had the honor of performing this piece in the world premiere 45 years ago. The Stockhausen Foundation for Music was founded by Stockhausen 27 years ago to support musicology and music life based on his own uh, artistic oeuvre. The Stockhausen Foundation has a huge archive which is visited yearly by scholars from all over the world to further their research. And we have a huge uh, concert, well not a concert hall, a rehearsal room which is used to train musicians who come from all over the world to learn the uh, authentic performance practice for the works of Karlheinz Stockhausen. Further, we act as consultants for large productions of Stockhausen's works all over the world. Locally, we have projects for children, elementary children, autistic, ch uh, autistic children, and we also have uh, exhibitions to bring the music of Stockhausen to a wide audience. The main thing that we do locally is the International Stockhausen Concerts and Courses every two years, which attracts music musicians and music lovers from all over the world to a nine-day series of concerts, daily concerts, daily seminars, and daily master classes. During one of these courses, it was several years ago, I think it was 2013, a young clarinetist from Brazil came to work with me on Harlequin. Her name is Paula Pires, and she will be performing the piece when I finish this introduction. She came to me in January 2020 to continue her work on the piece and to perfection it. She had been working off and on on the piece uh, over in the years in between, including a doctorate, which is yet to finish, on Harlequin. And we decided in January that she was almost finished and could be ready by December of 2020 to perform the piece in the memorial concert. So she took care of all the, uh, the formalities, including getting free uh, leave from her orchestra, which she is a principal clarinetist of, the Brasilia Orchestra in Brazil. And Everything was going fine. We got the necessary documents because of the corona situation from the Ministry of Culture of the North Rhine-Westphalia to allow her entrance uh, from this uh, hardly hit area, Brazil. And everything was going smoothly, we thought, and we were waiting for the final word from the German government about if concerts would be allowed at all. When we received news from Paula that both she and her husband had contracted corona. So our plans had to be changed. She was sick for a week, and our main point of focus was, of course, her health and hoping that she would recover without too many long-term issues. After a week, she started planning the streaming, which took place in Brasilia, and we was a, we were able to finish. Well, she was able to finish the uh, the uh, recording in February, and or organized the company to do the post-production uh, work. And we are happy to have this document of a young clarinetist who, through her determination and her dedication, was able to get back into shape after this terrible disease and present a wonderful performance, which you will see later. When Stockhausen approached me two years before he composed the piece, we hardly even knew a Harlequin, we hardly knew each other. He, he asked me if I could imagine playing and dancing at the same time. And I spontaneously said, well, why not? I didn't know, I hardly knew him at the time. I knew of him, of course, and I had such respect for his composition, uh, composition, 
adventures that I thought, well, who am I to say, no, this isn't possible, when he has made so many musical wonders possible during his career. This was in 1973. A year later, we had become our lifelong musical and private companionship, which led to over 40 works for clarinet or basset horn or bass clarinet. The performance took place in 1970, uh, 1975, the world premiere. Later, I realized that his question about dancing and playing at the same time was part of his development as a composer because we, he had been composing spatial music during all of his career. This was in the, a, a further extension of his idea that bringing music into space was one of the most important parameters of music next to pitches, rhythm, harmony, and so on. So the moving, the clarinet player takes the sound with him or her. He actually moves on the stage in comparison with other spatial compositions like Gesang de Junglinger for electronic music where the four loudspeakers are placed around the audience and originally one was planned to be placed above the audience or Gruppen for three orchestras surrounding the audience or in a horseshoe around the audience or Carré for four choirs and four orchestras surrounding the audience we now have a situation that's as simple as it may seem of a single musician constantly moving and the audience being able to feel the sound as it moves. In addition to the spatiality, in addition to moving, the, uh, the clarinet is also asked to act. This was a very important moment music historically because until then musicians were used to sitting on their seats or in the orchestra pit and now finally we have a situation the or the musician has been has climbed out of the orchestra pit onto the stage and is an actor on stage as a singer or well as as singers usually are in operas so stockhausen had begun a new era of mus of instrumental uh, acting in addition to performing highly complex through composed movements and the music. This continued most specifically in his opera cycle, Licht, in which musicians have an equal importance to singers on the stage. They are asked to carry out gestures, movements, but also to portray as protagonist the main uh, parts of the opera. Of Liszt, and so there are some even uh, even there are some scenes of the opera in which they're not even singers at all. There is purely instrumental. Harlequin has seven sections, and in these seven sections, the clarinet is asked to portray, portray different characteristics of Harlequin, which is a historical figure dating from the Commedia dell'arte of the sixteenth century, um, in which the very complex uh, personality of Harlequin must be represented without hands, you're playing the clarinet, and without facial, well, yes, you can use your eyes, but basically you have a body language, which is all you have to work with. So it's a challenge to portray these seven sections in a convincing way, and this is why the clarinet is, 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 goes through a lot of soul searching. I know a lot of my students, in the meantime, there are dozens who have learned the piece, it's a journey, it's a soul-searching uh, situation in a way because you have to get to know yourself. In the first section, the clarinetist unwinds, or Harlequin, unwinds the melody from a chromatic passage in the upper register, note for note and rhythm for rhythm. So at the end of this section, you have the, the melody itself complete with rhythm. In the second section, which is the playful constructor, the melody is taken apart piece by piece and transposed and slowed down and lands in the lowest register of the clarinet where we have our most lyrical moment called the enamored lyric. That's the third section. In this section, the melody basically stands still, is played as slowly and as lyrically as in the whole piece. This is the most 
quiet section in a way and the most introverted section. After this, the pedantic teacher comes and tries to analyze the piece for the audience, taking the piece apart and making mistakes as every professor, uh, absent-minded professor tends to do. And this turns into then a section called the roguish joker in which he makes fun of himself and entertains himself and he has so much fun just playing with the melody. Again, um, more or less entertaining himself. And, and we, we are, as audience, more spectators. He doesn't perform for us, he performs for himself. After the roguish joker comes the passionate dancer in which he learns that his feet are actually a duet partner in which he is playing a duet with his feet at the end of the passionate dancer. The feet have completely taken over the melody, well, the rhythm of the melody, because the feet can't play the melody, but uh, you hear the melody in the feet and the clarinet is not playing at all. Finally, in this silence, the clarinet recollect, uh, the harlequin, or the clarinetist, recollects where he came from. And you have this interpreted moment where he plays a passage, he plays an arpeggio, and gradually this arpeggio turns into a, a spinning motion, a rotating motion, where the melody is now taken from in range up to the top again, it ascends, and he, with every, uh, the, the clarinet uh, spins like a top, and then plays each of the mel uh, tones of the melody singly, until the, all of the tones have been played, and the piece ends up where it began, uh, one pitch higher, actually, one half pitch higher, on a single repeated note. As in many Stockhausen compositions, a piece ends by ascending. That's why it's so uplifting, why much of Stockhausen's music tends to uplift us. If you listen to men, much of his music, it, it tends to always end by ascending. And this is what makes it so inspiring and so, so consoling in a way, because it reminds us that music is actually the language of the soul. It doesn't need to be translated. It, it, it reaches our souls directly. And that's why music can be so uplifting, so inspiring, and so consoling. It brings people together because it doesn't have to be translated. Music is also nutrition for the soul. That means we really need it for spiritual and for uh, physical health. I would like to read the dedication of Harlequin, which Collins wrote based on a comment by someone who had experienced the first Harlequin in the 16th century. He changed the gender to apply to me, but I think it's a timeless, a timeless um, inspiration to make us think about what music does to us and why it's important to choose so carefully the music that is to reach our soul. Pleasure follows her unceasingly. She spreads joy and gladness everywhere. Laughter springs from beneath her very feet, and her ready satire offends no one, so merry are her quips. All that I've left to say is, may you find joy, may you be uplifted by Paula Pires' performance of Harlequin. And thank you, Paula. Thank you for tuning into our stream, and God bless you.